good to go. Okay. Well, perfect. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everybody, for being on. Uh, this is the November 1st meeting for the OPEB Trust Committee meeting. Uh, I would like to call the meeting to order at this point. And then on the agenda, we do have uh, minutes from the August 2nd meeting. Uh, pretty short and sweet. Thanks, Mike, for putting those together. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Minutes have been adopted. Okay. Uh, we also, this is a quarterly meeting, so uh, thank you for putting down the dates. Um, Chris, while you're on, you can uh, jot these down for all the other meetings. Uh, it looks like February 7th, May 2nd, August 1st, and November 7th. Uh, I did a quick glance at my calendar for next year. It doesn't look like they interfere with any holidays or anything. Obviously, if something comes up, Mike would let everybody know. Um, do we need a motion to approve uh, next year's schedule? Yeah, you should, um, Mike. Okay. Motion to approve. Everybody's not in their head. I probably should know this. Thanks for having my back. Motion to approve the four dates uh, for 2022's meetings. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Thanks, Harry. Uh, next year's uh, meeting schedule has been adopted. Okay. I'll turn it over to Chris now um, for your report on, uh, on this um, fund and how we're looking. All right. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good afternoon again, everybody. Uh, I don't remember, Mike, did you want to bring the deck up on your screen and work through it? Is that the easiest way to do it? Yes. Just so people have a, a, a visual reference. And again, as, as we always do, we'll hit the highlight pages here and won't um, drag you into too much of the gory detail unless, of course, there are questions or, or clarifications that the committee um, uh, desires. So once Mike brings it up on the screen here, we'll to work our way through some of the big picture considerations at the at the economy and broad market levels and then we'll obviously look at the portfolio itself and catch up on performance and the like um i apologize everyone uh i just want to re reduce the complexity of my desktop here before we do this i should have should have been prepared for is there is there anything showing right now no. Okay. That's what I was hoping you'd say. But let me just close a few things more here. All right. That's much better. Now. Still got too many things open. Stand by. Nope. All right. This should do it. There we go. My apologies. Can people see that? Yep. Right. I think we can jump, Mike, right to, um, if you would keep rolling here. I should have made it right here to page, uh, go back, if you would, just for a minute to five. I think it was. Yeah, that's perfect. Thanks, Mike. So just quickly, I think as everyone knows, right, uh, uh, the markets by and large uh, have continued to be pretty, pretty positive uh, for the calendar year to date, 2021, although this quarter things softened up a bit, particularly in September, uh, and really for the reasons that you've read about, right? And we, we try to highlight those in the upper left-hand corner of the page and then offer you up a little bit in the way of visuals. Um, most certainly, we've got the, uh, a federal uh, a reserve message that's evolving a little bit, right? You've read about uh, 
uh, the thought that stimulus is going to start to be taken out of the system. Some of that will start with this so-called quantitative easing, where the Fed's been purchasing treasury and, municipal, and, and mortgage-backed securities, excuse me, and they're going to start to taper that down over the course of the next several months. And then if you look in the upper right-hand corner of the page, uh, the now infamous, uh, this is the so-called dot plot, and this is where the Fed governors you know, put forth their expectations for interest rate hikes. And you see we highlight there in 2023, uh, expectations for rate hikes have accelerated a little bit, and more of the ultimate magnitude of those hikes has started to jump a little bit as well. So you can imagine, right, that that's created a little bit of consternation in the markets as investors kind of recalibrate around those changing circumstances, but um, by and large have been able to do so. Uh, we've had some policy gridlock in Washington, of course, with, with passage of some of these uh, uh, legislative acts that are still kind of in the works, and that's uh, been a little bit in the way of stressful for investors. And then finally, uh, and unfortunately, I suppose, continuing to deal with uh, you know, some of the challenges around the Delta variant and the like. Uh, and we'll see in a minute that all kind of came together. And, and for the third quarter, of 2021, the calendar quarter, you'll see that capital market returns were pretty modest, although they've improved actually pretty nicely in, in October. Uh, what we might think will help investors kind of navigate through this to the other side, and maybe a bit more economic stability and, and some of that regaining of momentum that we had uh, up until a, a month or two ago, uh, might be how strong the consumer is financially. And you see in the lower left-hand corner of the page, we show you the plot there, just household net worth and then household indebtedness. If you can make it out kind of in the right-hand side of that exhibit, you see those two things kind of the trajectories both up and down respectively. Consumers are as healthy as they've been financially really almost at any time in history. And, and, and that certainly, I think a lot of um, analysts like ourselves uh, uh, may be, uh, is ultimately a good thing. And again, maybe that bridge to, you know, keeping the markets on somewhat of an even keel until um, some of these uh, headline situations uh, uh, remediate themselves. Uh, and then finally, uh, a little bit more under the hood here in granular, but finally in the lower right-hand corner, we continue to see these reversals and what's working best in terms of market returns. And that I admit is a busy chart there, but the, the takeaway for the committee hopefully is you'll remember um, the onset of the pandemic once that stimulus was applied back in the spring of 2020, um, uh, it was the large cap names in the US, big companies, the big tech names in particular that really kind of took off to the races immediately. And then everything else struggled to kind of catch up. And then we had in the election in the fall through this spring, uh, much broader return, uh, capital market return patterns, right? The smaller company equities did well, international equities did well. Um, value as a style of investing as compared to growth did well, um, but you did see in the third quarter a bit of a reversal with some of these headline uh, uh, considerations that look more like what they looked at, in, at least on the margin at the beginning of the pandemic, so no surprise, right, that we had that reversal. Uh, anyways, that all kind of comes together. If you skip, Mike, ahead just a page or two here, just to provide a little more context to the committee. Um, Maybe we'll just spend, uh, I would keep, go yeah, right there, this page, if you would go back, does a nice job, I think, uh, just shows you returns. So the, the horizontal or the vertical bar charts, excuse me, are um, year to date. And then you see we've got in circles quarter to date. So I think the takeaway for the committee, right, you see there, if you just run your finger across the page, that uh, for the quarter, Fixed income markets, right, were nominally positive or flat, really, all things considered. Equity markets were mixed as well. You see there, large cap, where Mike's kind of highlighting the cursor, were up just a touch. But small company names in the U.S. and international names were down a touch. And then some of the so-called kind of reopening or reflation trades, the, the real estates and commodity type names um, had OK quarters. You, you'll see in a minute when we mix it all together, it made for kind of a nondescript quarter for, for balanced portfolios like the one you've got in place for the trust. So. Um, that is, uh, I think, all in the interest of time, all I'll do in terms of backdrop. Before we segue over to look at the portfolio and a couple of return figures, any any questions from the committee? 
you stand bigger picture things or considerations? Um, Mike, is there, um, Mike O'Neill, is there an um, investment portfolio? I mean, policy, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sure there is, there was when I was there, but I just didn't know if it's been updated. Yep, that's, we look at that regularly. We, okay. we usually, yeah, we usually, Bonnie, once a year as part of our governance process, we'll formally look at that or more okay. if circumstances good. dictate, but a good question, there is indeed one in place. Um, Thank you, Chris. Absolutely. Doesn't sound like there's anything else. If we could, Mike, we'll skip ahead and let's look at the portfolio balances at the end of September, if we could. There's a lot of, obviously, there we go. Uh, that's it. Perfect. Um, so as of September 30th, just shy of $30 million of invested assets. Um, uh, you see an, an, an actual allocations pretty darn close to the target allocations that you specify in your policy statement. A little bit of fluctuation, but I don't think rising to the level where we need to take action. I think we're in pretty good order from a, um, a portfolio, a, a, a balanced perspective, if you will. Uh, the only other thing I would mention on this page, and it's not an action item for the committee either, but just as an, an awareness if you see there within the fixed income category at the top of the schedule, your third fixed income manager down, it's got an acronym, but it says PGM total return. That's the Prudential team. Some of you may recall or remember um, when we first took them. Uh, we did elevate that strategy to discuss. Remember in kind of our research uh, 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 qualifications, if you will, for managers, discuss is just a slightly elevated level. It associates in this case, because there were a couple of changes to the portfolio management team that our uh, researchers are keeping tabs on. Again, it's uh, strictly for the record. Uh, it doesn't require action and we're not asking you to do anything with that. It's just on a little bit of a, an elevated level of surveillance. Um, for those reasons, the balance of the roster up and down is all in good working order from a research, a management research perspective and, and no recommendations for, uh, for the committee this afternoon. Um, and then Mike, maybe we'll jump ahead just quickly to the very next page and we'll just look at uh, our performance. So kind of as advertised or hinted at, right? You'll see the quarter was kind of a flat one, essentially down just a touch here about a four tenths of a percentage point, about in line with what the broad markets did. You can see calendar year to date through September, uh, up just about 8%, uh, a touch ahead of the broad blended benchmark. And you see the one year number, 20% uh, return and, and ahead of the benchmark and, and, and most of the other numbers net of those manager fees you know, accruing north of the benchmarks as well. So I think we're in, in good working order from a, a performance standpoint a manager roster standpoint. And then finally on the allocation front, I think we're in good shape too, but let me pause there and see what questions the committee may have. Chris, on the, uh, on the PGIM, the mm -hmm. discuss status, that's strictly because management changed on that fund, correct? Yeah, so they had one of their longstanding managers there, uh, and they have a team approach, importantly, Mike, I should emphasize that, right? So there's three or four individuals at the portfolio management level who are uh, kind of running the strategy. One of those individuals rate, rotated off into a, a different role with some of their other strategies, uh, and the folks that kind of remain and are, and are going to uh, increase their involvement, if you will, with the strategy. Uh, have ramped up a little bit. So yeah, strictly a, a byproduct of just our team. Researchers will probably have it on discuss for a quarter, maybe two's time. Uh, and then every expectation is Mike, they'll navigate through those changes, you know, perfectly fine and it'll revert back to maintain. Not an issue of performance concern or, or anything other than just noting those, uh, you know, the new, the new resources, if you will. Um, Any, anything else from the committee? I did want to be obviously be sensitive to time and know we had a roll in our four o'clock soon. So if there's uh, Mr. Mayor, no other uh, uh, questions, that's all uh, we had this afternoon for the group. Okay, nobody else with any questions at all? But just one quick question. I noticed on a previous page in your presentation, you talk about supply chain disruptions. Um, and they've really taken a dive, but it doesn't seem to have affected these particular markets. 
Yeah, it's a great question, Claudia. And I, you know, I did gloss over it a little bit, but I'm glad you brought it up, right? So certainly the other kind of big headline uh, 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 scenario, if you will, or circumstance that the markets have been grappling with is supply chain disruption, as you point out, and what it may mean for inflation. We obviously have seen some pockets of elevated inflation here. Um, the Fed story around it, I think, as you've all read and know, right, is that these forces are likely to be transitory, right, that the markets and the economy will kind of recalibrate, supply chains will start to loosen up. You've seen the ports now on the West Coast going to 24-hour operations. You've read about Walmart and some of the other large retailers extending their hours and efforts. So I think there is a school of thought, Claudia, and I think that we would share it that the markets are not getting too nervous about it because the expectation is that it's just kind of a, a, a point in time thing that's manageable and that ultimately, you know, market forces will serve to correct some of these imbalances. Um, and again, very strong consumer, right? Corporate earnings remain very solid. The backdrop macroeconomically, absent the supply chain considerations, is still pretty darn solid as well. And I think that probably all comes together in, in what you just mentioned, right? It hasn't really um, affected markets that dramatically because I think everyone views it as somewhat temporary. Thank you, Chris. Sure. No, that's a good question. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, okay, um, I'm all set if there are no other questions. The folks are good. No, nope, looks like we're good. Okay. Any other business before us, uh, Mike? Just the uh, uh, town meeting policy and just did. I included whether, that. In each whether of the, the group wants to do the future so meetings via could... Zoom or in person. Right. Yeah, the last meeting we had was in person, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So I put the policy in, in the package and included it on each of the agendas because the policy calls for the group to make a decision. So I didn't want to be presumptuous in, in moving forward with scheduling today's meetings. So perhaps, I don't know if we need to take a vote or, or discuss that or what, but that's that's the reason I, I inserted that on each of the agendas today. Let me go back to my calendar for February 7th. I may run into an issue that day. Nope, February, that's a Monday, so nope. Yeah, I'm fine with in person, so. I don't know, Chris, how far you have to travel to get to Weathersfield, but. Oh, we're close, Mr. Mayor. If it works for in person, we're either, I'm going to be in Windsor or Avon. So one way or the other, we can get out to you for sure. Okay. Harry, that's okay with you in person? Yes, I checked those dates. It's perfect. Sounds good. When's, uh pitchers and catchers and opening day of Red Sox. We got to watch out for that for the May 2nd. <laughs> Thanks. So. Okay. Without anything else, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. I have it. We're adjourned. Okay. And we'll go to a four o'clock one. Separate uh, login credentials, Mike? Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thanks. Everybody.